I realized I didn't address one of the other main points, and there were others as well, but these were two that stood out to me. And again, the Calvinist says that God has planned everything, and the open theist says God doesn't know. So the Calvinist says, yes, God would have been the author of all that because it has some greater purpose, and the open theist says, no, God doesn't have anything to do with that, with sin, and doesn't know exactly what we're going to do. Regarding evil, rape, violence, I don't know how anyone can make the assertion that each atrocious act of mankind was predestined by God. Evil will not win on that last day, but today it pulses and seethes and never, ever sleeps. Horrible things happen in the world in an entropic manner because even though Satan is bound, i.e. he can no longer cause permanent death, he is still ravaging the earth like a rabid dog being cornered by animal control. He will not go quietly into the night just because his end is inevitable. No, he's going to fight like mad and take out as much collateral damage as possible before his day is done. God is love. Our Father does not cause these atrocities. They are the work of an evil that we have welcomed with open arms. Wow, there's a firework to accentuate that. Most of humanity didn't believe when Jesus stood right in front of their faces. What does that tell you about the proportion who believe now, thousands of years later? Less children of God, more children of perdition. Does it not make perfect, simplistic sense that the evil in our world is increasing? With our free will, we have allowed it to happen, and it's just like this evil generation to shove it off onto God. We do not bend over and wash the feet of the lowest among us. We do not let brotherly love continue. We do not remember those in prisons, as we are also in the body. We do not love our neighbors as ourselves. We do not give the shirts off our backs for those in need, and we do not turn the other cheek. We demand an eye for an eye, plus an arm, a leg, and a head if we can get it. We sue anyone and everyone for our grievances. We declare war. Our governments steal from us and from each other. We let the poor be poor and the homeless be homeless. We allow entire populations to starve and acts of genocide to occur in this our present day. We have not kept God's holy word, the greatest of which is to love him and each other. In the bloody aftermath of our choices, God comes along, sweeps up the wreckage, and does what God does best. He brings goodness, hope, peace, and love from it. If we don't turn our backs on him first. Therein lies the most tragic catch-22 that really isn't one at all. Although it has to be the most widely used excuse for falling away from God or never believing in him at all. God is a 24-7 repair shop for all manners of calamities, but most of us refuse to take our broken hearts and bodies in for a free estimate, even though the repairs are free too. Instead, we blame him for our disease, our wars, our debts, our infidelities and broken families, while he can only look on in immeasurable sadness and loss. We are ungrateful, unaccountable, hateful, rebellious children who reject and curse our father. And he fiercely loves us anyway. But he will not save us unless we ask. He promised he wouldn't. So, thank you for listening. These are great topics. God, what probably my favorite topic in the world. <laughs> and then MBTI. <laughs> but God's definitely first. Debates about God? Oh my gosh. Like, it's heaven for me to listen to these. Some are better than others. Some are amazing. Some are awful. Most of them are scholars or, you know, graduate students. But most of them are in some way professionally affiliated. They're usually from this, this society or that society or they're a professor here or whatever. So they're usually, usually very good guests and usually very knowledgeable about their chosen viewpoint. And I really hope people do like it because I'd love to keep talking about stuff like this. I'm working right now on my INFP series so I can get those last few out because I think I've got two left and I know I'm super behind on that. I'm also working on my dating challenge. I've got one of those that I've been working on for a while, but I'm I'm just about ready to publish it. Today I 
thank everyone that serves and has served in the military for protecting this one nation under God and for ensuring our freedom and independence. So thank you so much to the armed forces. Happy 4th, everyone.